Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In part two of this short series, I'm going to go over the basics of the get. I'm going to send data to the Nection or send a command to the Nection and then we'll see the data that comes back. And I'll go over the differences between requesting text, like from a text box, and a value or a number from a number field or a slider. We're sending the get for this text box right here and if you look we're getting 500 back and then we've got those FFs, three FFs, but it started by this P right here so that's kind of interesting and we'll look at why that is. If we go down to this window right here and turn it over to the string version instead of the hex you can see what we're sending from the Arduino. We're sending that get to.txt and then we're sending the FFs. If you look at the line below it, you can see it in the format that we're sending it. If we go over to this window and change it to a string, you can see what we're sending back. And that corresponds to what we're seeing here. The only difference is we're seeing little question marks instead of Y's. But when you get into the, since we're sending an FF, and FF isn't an actual ASCII character, different devices will display it in different ways. So you just have to understand that, that if you get some weird ASCII number or weird hex number, it's just going to show up funny. But it is working exactly like we would want. You can see that when we send the value to the Nection, it returns what it is we're asking for. Now what the P means, if you look at, I'm going to go back to hex, 70 means the Nection is letting the device know that's receiving the data that it's sending text, that you're getting a string. If you remember, we went over this before, a hex 35 is 5, a hex 30 and 30 is 0 and 0, which is the 500. I believe it's 71, or Q will tell that it's sending a number instead of a hex, and we're going to do that next. So we're going to go back over to the Arduino here. I am going to put a delay in up here just to slow things down a little bit. Just make it so that the serial monitor doesn't go quite as quickly. But right here, what we're going to get is the N0, but instead of text, we have to ask for the value, VAL. We're going to upload this. It's uploaded, everything is fine. What I did is I shut this off, so we're not getting any data in the COM yet, and I cleared the output. So we'll start it now, and you'll see all this will change. Remember we put a three second delay in there, so it's going to come through a little bit different. But you can see here that now we're sending a 71, and if you look at the data up here, it's a Q. Uh, an ASCII or the hex value of 70 equates to a lowercase p, and the ASCII 71 or the hex value of 71 equates to a Q. And I'll show it to you in string form now. But you can see that the data it's really different. It's not being able to equate anything because it's not sending text. It's just sending the ASCII value for 500 instead of the text 500. And that can make it a little bit harder to read, but we'll go to this, we'll put it back to hex, and what it's sending is F40100. And it sends it backwards. So the number that the lowest number, like the zero on the 500, is this number. And then the second zero would be this hex value. That's kind of the way you have to think about it. So when you put the numbers together, you'd put 0, 1, F4, and you can leave off these other zeros. But if there were values in here, it would, this would be on the left side. And then this would be the next one, the next one, the next one. 
Well, I'm going to bring up the calculator now for the for the PC and show you that hex that this hex will change to 500. And then we'll adjust the slider and I'll show you some other things. Right, this is a programmer's calculator, so it shows decimal and hex. So we'll take decimal and we'll take 500. And if you look at the hex value of it, if I change it to hex, it's 1F4. And if you look at this, if we were to put this at the far right and this the next one over, it'd be 1F4. And as the number gets bigger, which you'll see me adjust now to a bigger number, you're going to see that that changed. So now 598, if I go back to the calculator, we'll leave it in hex. In decimal is 1432, and that is exactly what that is. Now if we go back to this, we're representing this as a string. And do you remember the counter we had here? is equal to 8 because it sent 8 characters over. Let me stretch this out a little bit here so you can see it. You see here there's going to be 8 digits across here. We have the 71 which denotes it as a value other than a string and then there's 4 sets of data which will display the actual value and then it's followed by 3 F's. So there's 5 over here and then 3 which is 8. So that makes sense. If we go over here the reason that I put the counter on here if you count these across, because these are each a character interpreted as best it can, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six characters here. And that's because the Arduino doesn't know how to represent the zero, zero. At least that's my guess. I've, I've looked into this a little bit and I can't figure out exactly why. If you go back to this, what it does is if it doesn't know what it is, it just puts this backslash in an X to know you, to let you know if you're looking at the display in string mode that it's sending a hex value 00. zero. It doesn't know how to interpret the 5 either, so it's sending that as x05 with the backslash to let you know it's escaping. That's called an escape sequence. But it tries to turn this 98 into a little square. So that's kind of interesting there. If I adjust the slider now, you'll see that um, this little square will go away. And now it's trying to turn it E0. It tried to turn it into a little ampersand or something like that, a little A with a little dot above it. So it tries to adjust it into something, but we're going to go ahead and turn it way down here. And 2A in hex must be an asterisk. So I find that kind of interesting. It's fun to see how the different um, devices interpret the data. So we're sending it 8 data, 8 bits. Now let's go back to the display and see it still doesn't really know what to do with the data. But it's sending 8 even though we're only seeing 6. And it's important to know that so when we go and manipulate the data in the Arduino, you want to know how many characters you're manipulating. Now we're going to go ahead and change the Arduino to get the value of the slider itself. So in this case it's H0. What we're going to see is the same thing we got with the text box. Or no, not with the text box, with the number box, N0. Okay, it's done uploading. You can't really tell in here um, because it's all the same over and over, but I let it go for a little while and you can see that we're still getting that. And if I adjust it, it still works. We'll go back to the monitor and you can see that we're getting the data just fine. There is one more case though that I want to show you in case, what if you select an item that doesn't exist? We'll go back to the Arduino and we're going to select H1. So it's a slider that doesn't exist. Or it could be anything. Like in the last uh, video I used the word Bill. Let's use Bill and see if we can go get that. I'm going to upload it. Okay, it uploaded just fine. I've switched it over to hex. Over here we're sending get bill.val, which doesn't exist on this page. And 1A is an error message that's being sent back to the Arduino that says, hey, this is an invalid object. 
we don't know what that is. In other words, the next shin doesn't know what that is. So that can come in handy for troubleshooting sometimes. So if you ever see the 1A, you know that you're sending an invalid string over. But it still is the get. So what if we left this space out? Or in other words, the whole command really wasn't recognized by the next shin. So we'll go back to this and we'll just, and we'll upload it. Okay, and here's the first get bill, second, and we really get the same thing coming back because it just doesn't know how to interpret that. And now we're gonna have one final um, thing that we're gonna send to it. Past video, I showed you how to send quotes within quotes. The backslash is an escape character that tells the uh, Arduino to ignore it and go ahead and just send it as a quote. And we're going to send Bill again. So what we're doing is we're sending a string, just a nection isn't, doesn't know what Bill is. So we're just sending a string up to the nection and we'll see what happens. So what we've done, you can see that we sent get Bill in quotes and it is replying with something and it's replying with 70 which means it's a string. Now if we go to the string it's sending bill back. If you ever want to do a test on an action display, you send the get request. I'll bring the Arduino code over again. You send the get request, you need the space, and then you just put something in quotes and it will send it up and then you can get it back. So in this little video, I didn't really go over what to do with the data when you get it back. What I've done is I've shown you how to send the command up and the different formats as to how it comes back. And it's important to remember that when you when the data comes back, it's going to be preceded by a 70 or a 71, which will tell you whether it's a string or a value, which you should actually know by what you sent to the data, but that can still come in handy to error check and things. And then we'll have to determine how to parse through the data. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.